Hey guys and welcome. There are many mysteries within God of War's universe. Who really is Fey? Why was Fey and Thor sharing a drink in Vanaheim? What mythology will we visit next? But there's one mystery in particular that five years later, we still have absolutely no idea the reason behind it or how it happened. One mystery that's haunted the God of War community for all of this time, caused for hundreds of different speculation and theory videos, and nobody really knows, and the developers just will not hint to us at all. That mystery is who blew that damn horn in 2018? Today, we're going to sit down and present all the facts we know about this. What happened leading up to this event? Who could be in Midgard at that time to blow the horn? And who could speak the ancient tongue of the world serpent? And then some more things too. So, leave a like on today's video, it'd be very, very much appreciated. Do consider subscribing to the channel as well if you're brand new or an existing viewer, that would be absolutely amazing. We're very close to our goal of 20,000 subscribers before the end of the year, so one final push and we'll get there. But, without further ado everyone, let's dive straight in. And don't forget to leave your comments and theories down below in the comments. So, in order for us to really look at what's going on here at the time, what characters are involved in the story at that particular time too, and what's happening around Kratos and Atreus, let's rewind and go back to the Magni and Modi fight. So, Kratos kills Magni and Modi runs off in disbelief that his brother was killed. At this point, we see that Atreus started to feel unwell. Atreus had a history of being ill, which we later find out was due to the god inside him wanting to come out and fighting against Atreus' mortal self. However, with Kratos keeping that side of him a secret, it was making him really, really ill. This is why at the beginning of the game, Atreus and Kratos were very argumentative about him being ready, and that Kratos constantly referring back to Atreus' sickness, but Kratos didn't realise that he was the actual reason as to why Atreus was sick. Anyway, Atreus begins to cough up blood and starts to develop some form of fever. However, he's adamant that he's fine at the time. Mimir states that Atreus needs Freya. However, Atreus, being a stubborn lad that he is, didn't think he needed any help at all. So, they carried on. Atreus seemed okay for a while, until they turned up into Tyr's temple and went into a secret room below. It was here that we ran into Modi again. He begins to shock Kratos and sending him to the ground, almost paralysing him, stating that he was the one that earned that hammer and that piece of the chisel. However, everyone now is going to think back in Asgard that he's only got that piece of the chisel because Magni's dead. It'll be a joke and a laughing stock. But if he kills Kratos, no one will think that he's a fool. So this was his motivation for doing so. However, Atreus in the background with him just being a kid tries his best to fend off Modi and try to free his father, firing shock arrows which were subsequently blocked by Modi. Modi starts to talk about Faye, which was of course Atreus' mother and Kratos' wife, and Atreus just loses it. His anger gets out of control and he pulls out his knife and rushes towards Modi before Modi swipes him away with his shield and continues to shock Kratos. Modi then turns to Atreus and says, You're going to be my new brother, right after he's finished killing Kratos. But suddenly, Atreus has this urge flush through him, almost like a suit of rage covering his body, very similar to that of his father's, in which he then collapses to the ground and passes out. Modi laughs and taunts Kratos at this time, and this is where Kratos uses his rage in order to fight back against Modi, punches him in the stomach and he cowers and runs away. Kratos rushes over to Atreus and finds that he's looking really worse for wear, and this is where we take him to Freya. However, on the way out of the temple, this is where things start to become a little weird. Take the boat. Freya's isn't far. different to usual, straight after Atreus is almost dead. As we walk outside, the sky turns dark, with a sudden burst of red in the distance. Red particles floating around the lands? What are these, and where did they come from? We get into a boat, and make our way to Freya's house, and this part of the dialogue is very interesting from Mimir, and could mean a few different things here. Odin's eye is on you, brother. Especially now that you've taken to killing his kin. Freya's forest is a blind spot for him. This is our smartest move. And if 
anyone can heal him. It's hot. What is happening to him? I've seen it in mortals that some conflict of the mind expresses itself as an ailment of the body. Never in a god. A god believing himself mortal. I can only imagine. We're almost there. But then as we dock, it happens. Somebody just called the serpent. Yes. Somebody just called the serpent. But the million dollar question is, who called the serpent? Right, we've done our bit of recapping, so let's throw a few scenarios around here. Who could this be? Well, Odin and Thor were not present in the game physically, however they are mentioned a lot, so that's something to bear into mind. Magni is dead, Modi ran off and back to Asgard to tell Thor of what happened which is of course where he beats him and where we find him as we go up the mountain, so I don't think it was any of them. I don't think it will be Thor, as the World Serpent and Thor absolutely despise each other. It probably won't be Odin either, as the Serpent is a giant and giants ultimately hate Odin and try to hide away from them in these marbles that we found in Ragnarok. So I don't think it's any of Thor, Odin, Magni or Modi, so we can move those to one side. Now, could it have been Boulder? It could have been? But well, I don't think it was. Hear me out here. Literally like an hour later into the campaign, we find him with the dragon at the very top of the mountain. And then in Ragnarok, it shows that this dragon was in fact from Asgard. So at that particular time, Boulder could have very well have gone back to Asgard to update Odin or tell him what's happening or even Thor of that matter. And then he came at a later date. Plus, Boulder doesn't strike me as someone that would know or care about speaking the giant's tongue or speaking this obscure language that the world serpent would with him being Freya's son as well surely we would have mentioned something about him knowing these languages or knowing more around how to communicate with the world serpent and with him being brothers with Thor I don't think they're going to get along very well anyway so for me personally I don't think it was Boulder you've got to remember though as well when we first take Mimir to the horn to summon the serpent he says that this serpent speaks an obscure tongue one even older than these mountains None are left in Midgard that can speak it, except Mimir, and later we find out that Atreus can too. So, just from that piece of dialogue there, I don't think it's anyone in Midgard at all, so it would be one of the gods in the realms that have travelled there. Or it could be like the giants, or the, the dwarfs, or someone like that. Just from this statement from Mimir, it just opens the door to it being not just someone within Midgard, but also potentially the gods in the other realms, or any of the other beings or creatures or whatever it might be so we've got the dwarfs the giants anything like that could also potentially speak this language as well so anyway let's dive into some theories so there's five theories to go through today and they're all pretty interesting the first two are my absolute favorites so theory number one when we killed boulder it commenced thimble winter what if when atreus died it would do the opposite of Fimble Winter. Boulder's death triggered Fimble Winter, very much like what's in Niflheim, Niflheim being a primordial realm. Atreus's death could have been very much like Muspelheim, which explains why the red ashy clouds and the red particles were going all around the atmosphere and all around the place when we were going through. Look, I have no theory behind why this might be the case or what would have happened here. Maybe there could have been two prophecies leading to Ragnarok. Maybe it could have been that if Atreus died, Ragnarok starts there and then. But it's just interesting to think and look at the atmosphere at the time of that incident. Atreus passes out, we walk outside with him in, in our arms unconscious, and the entire outside changes. The question is, why does it change at that very moment? Because it was fine before... So for me, it has to be something to do with Atreus being unconscious. I think this is massively to do with the prophecy and potentially the reason why this horn was blown in the first place and the reason why the atmosphere completely changed when Atreus became unconscious. But of course, let me know your theories down below. But this takes me nicely onto my second theory, which I think is my favorite one out of the bunch. So, Atreus and Angraboda are the creators of Jormungandr, right? They created him in Jotunheim, and in Ragnarok, he was hit so hard by Thor's hammer, he was sent back in time, and that's how he was created, essentially. And if there was no Atreus, there would be no Jormungandr. Angraboda's prophecy is to tell Loki his prophecy when he reached Ironwood. But again, if he's dead because Kratos wasn't telling him about him being a god, and 
he was having an internal fight with his mortal self and his god self, it's probably a circumstance that isn't foretold on the prophecy, right? Because it's Kratos just not telling him something. It's not like he died in battle or anything like that. Like, the death in battle would be on the prophecy, but a secret that his father's keeping from him? Why would that be on the prophecy? So, what if a giant who was in charge of the prophecy, I would probably say at that time it was Angraboda's mother, because I think Angraboda would have been quite young at that time to be able to do that, who was also the original keeper of those marbles, was the original person there waiting for the time to come to pass down to a daughter to create these shrines, and that would be, of course, when Atreus had grown up slightly and when the game of Ragnarok began. We know that Angraboda could visit different realms because that's what she did in Ragnarok. We first seen her in Muswellheim and she went around the different realms when we were there and surprised us going there. So we know for a fact that she can travel between them. So why would she not be able to travel to Midgard? I think that whoever was in charge, let's just say, for example, it's Angraboda's mother, they went to Midgard and summoned Jormungandr by blowing on this horn to understand what's going on with Atreus. They're giants, they should in theory be able to speak the same tongue as Jormungandr, and the giant in the original marble from Ragnarok would have probably spoken or known Angraboda's parents with them disappearing at very similar times. It could very well be the case that a giant from Ironwood, which could be Angraboda's mother or father or someone that's related to that in some way, visited Midgard when they heard about what happened to Atreus, and the closest thing to telling them was the World Serpent, which is why they summoned him using the horn, and of course that's where they had the conversation. And because the prophecy was at risk, this is where the second or alternative version of Fimble Winter was taking place, which would be where the Muspelheim side of things come into play, which is why the sky went red, the ashy particles all over the place as well, and potentially that could be the case. The prophecy was just at risk, so the world was going to end. Look, it's a pretty crazy theory, but I'm just thinking about what it means leading up to the fact that the horn is being blown. Why was the atmosphere like that? Why was the why was there so much ash and different particles in the sky when we moved to take Atreus to Freya? What does all of this mean? Because ultimately, it all should connect at one point, right? So that's what we've all got to take into account. I would love for you guys to drop in the comments down below what you do think about that. Why did the atmosphere change after Atreus was unconscious? And up to that point, now, theory number three, which is a really interesting one. What if the person to sound the horn was Athena? Like, why would it be, right? But is it a coincidence that she turned up in the boat a short time later when Kratos was going to get the Blades of Chaos? Look, I know that it's probably due to her being there when Kratos starts again to use the Blades of Chaos with obviously him bringing them from the likes of Greece, turning back into that god killer potentially that he said he would never be again, even hiding those blades away under his cabin so Atreus would never find them, which is why she came back and she was tormenting him for that. But what if Athena was planned to ultimately be a bigger part of the story than we already know? What if, when she died in God of War 2, with the same particle effects as the mask in Ragnarok, she was always meant to come back after that or at a later date, potentially this new mythology going forward. That one's a little more crazy, probably not as true, but it's fun to theorise and I'd love to know what you guys think. Theory number four, I've always seen comments about people saying that when Kratos blew the Galahorn in Ragnarok to commence Ragnarok, the vibrations reverberated through time, which is what they heard, but I don't agree with this and don't think this is the case because ultimately they both do sound very different so that's one to think about as well but if you think that's true let me know down below and then theory number five could the person that blew the horn be Sindri Sindri has many mysteries throughout God of War's story and he even met with Atreus and Jormungandr in Ragnarok obviously just to accompany Atreus but he was there it was also Sindri's initial idea for Atreus to go and speak with Jormungandr in Ragnarok. So could there be something there? Uh, I, I don't know, maybe I'm clutching the straws here. I think Sindri is much smarter than he lets off to be. Maybe Sindri was the one to sound the horn to deflect Odin, Thor, or whoever it was that was trying to follow Kratos and Atreus. Maybe he was in between realms and found out what was going on, and found out that Atreus and Kratos were being followed, or they were looking for them and they were closing in on their location fast. So in order for Kratos and Atreus to escape, Sindri sounded the horn to distract them, to allow them to make their way into the witch's cave without being spotted. Look, I don't know, but my favourite one is the Angraboda and Atreus one, and even the one with the 
killing boulder with thimble winter and atreus with like the musical home thing they're my two favorite ones and the ones i feel like could have something there as well but it's that atmosphere guys that is the one thing that changed when atreus was unconscious why did that change what caused it to change that's the biggest thing and ultimately i think it's to do with the prophecy if atreus dies the prophecy is no more which is essentially putting a massive risk to other people's prophecies which would screw up everything you've got to remember if you look on the shrine at the end of god of wars 2018 story there is not at one point any part on there of atreus dying or any part of atreus becoming ill or unconscious it's just not part of the prophecy so if he died that prophecy is no more look i don't know why or how or who blew the horn it might very well be someone from Ironwood, especially taking into perspective the Ragnarok story now that we've played through it. I think it was Angraboda's mother, or someone that knew Angraboda's mother, or someone that was in charge of the prophecy at the time. It could even be the norms. Look, these are the facts that we've got here. I'd love to have a discussion with everyone down below in the comments. I personally think that it was Ang someone related to the giants in Ironwood. That's who I think has went back, blew the horn, and that's why, because they can relate to Jormungandr and potentially talk the tongue of your Mangandra as well as very few people can but i would love to know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments as to what you think and who you think blew this horn after you've played god of war ragnarok what do you think down below but i hope you have enjoyed today's video everyone leave a like if you have again leave all your comments down below and don't forget to subscribe if you guys are brand new or an existing viewer we are so close to 20k guys we are so 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 close and i would absolutely love it if we could hit 20k before the end of the year that would be absolutely amazing but enjoy the rest of your day everyone we'll see you all in the next one